five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is the Ramble, and I am Alex Bennett, and we will be here until midnight Eastern Daylight Time. We're going to talk with Stephen Pearl. WHN 1050, the crap that your parents listened to back in 62. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ed Brown at WHN Lake Success. Right now, we're going to be listening to a cut from the Cat Records album, The Many Hairstyles of Jack Jones. <laughs> <laughs> William B. Williams isn't coming in today. He's all coked out and being a cunt as usual. Yeah. WHN 1050, quick turn the dial to something else before your brains fall out. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> remember those days? Is, you know? it, well, I don't remember it because I was in San Francisco. I grew up in oh, San Francisco, right. so I never, I, I, you know, in retrospect, I knew about that stuff because I came to work in New York and people talked uh -huh. about William B. Williams and yeah. you know Ted Brown and the, blah, 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 yeah. you know. But I was, you know, I was the last WMCA good guy. That's oh really? You and the Harry Harrison and the Gary Stevens. What and happened those. was they brought it back, okay? They did away with the good guys, and then they brought it back. Uh -huh. And I was the only guy there who hadn't been a good guy before, oh, so I became the last good guy. Uh huh. Put the sweatshirt on, shut up, and say what we tell you to. I got the sweatshirt and everything, but then, then uh, I just looked online, and you want to know the sad story here? Yes. I'm not only the last good guy, uh, Gary Stevens and I are the last living good guys. Oh, my God. They're all dead. No, no, no. Yeah, Who will I read about in Go Magazine? What will uh, I do? Uh, uh, Jack Spector is dead. So is his, yeah, so, so Harry is his, Harrison just uh, bought the farm. Uh, 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 Harry Harrison bought the farm. Um, so we, you know, really of the good guys, uh, I and uh, Gary Stevens supposedly is still alive too. So, and I, he was never with me when I was there. However, uh, didn't get to pal around with Gary Stevens. Didn't right? get to pal around, but I did get to pal around. I g did get to know uh, Murray the K. Ah, Murray the K. Yeah, because he came to WMCA. That was the last gig he ever had in New York. And I, uh -huh. one night, I'm driving in on, uh, to go to my show, which is, goes on at eleven o'clock. And uh, because I was on Saturday nights, I did Barry Gray's show, basically uh -huh. his slot from his studio. And I, uh, uh, I'm driving in, and they're playing wall-to-wall -wall music. Now, in those days, nobody played wall-to-wall -wall music, uh -huh. okay? Yeah. And I drive up to the station, and I could park right out in front in those days, and there's this litter and they've got Murray the K on it, and they're wheeling him out into an ambulance. <laughs> oh, my God. And that was his last night in New York City. Oh, he had collapsed. Okay. He had collapsed. Oh, yeah, and yeah, I yeah. went up and I replaced him. I took over his show that night, and um, uh, he was he, he was okay. He lived a couple of more years, but he never worked at WMCA again. So. Ah, blurry. You know, in heaven, he's called the third Beatle. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait a minute. No, yes, he would be the third Beatle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I got to say, hey, do your Beatles map, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you, what do you remember about a radio? What You had WHN was a station you listened to. It doesn't exist anymore. I don't know what it became. It became country later on, and then I think they exploded and turned it to confetti or something. I don't know what happened to it. Yeah. And then, uh, let's see here. Then there was WMCA, and there was... a. WABC was playing rock too in those days. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah. WMCA yeah. on the left side of the dial, WABC on the right side of the dial, 77. Yeah. And, better, and, and, and uh, let's see, we had the good guys, and they had, uh, who did they have over at uh, WABC? They had, Cousin Brucey was there. Cousin Brucey, you know, a lot of you kids like using the term acid rock. I prefer the term progressive rock. On WABC, 77, WABC, there's the box tops. See? That's, see? That's, that's, uh, yeah. 
Um, he's still around. God bless him. Yeah, well, he, he, uh, he's, he's still around. He, um, they, they built a studio. <laughs> they had a studio at, uh, at Sirius XM. It was a studio he only used once a week, but he put all these pictures up of his, his the history of Cousin Brucey, <laughs> right? Week he's, number seven. No, but the strange part was they had all these old pictures of him with Beatles and stuff, and he was losing his hair. Uh, you know, it showed the widow's peak and the yeah. recession, right? And then all of a sudden, the picture next to it is a picture of him a couple of weeks ago, and he's got a big head of hair again. Oh, yeah, sure. It's like the Carl yeah. Perkins, Tony Bennett syndrome. Yeah, don't create that kind of comparison when you're trying to sell yourself, you know? Yeah, sure. Uh, so sure. He, he was the king of the hair pieces. He, bad, bad wig. Bad wig. <laughs> hey! Hey, Bruce, it's Tony Bennett. Can I borrow one of your wigs? I'm doing a show tonight. I need that wig that looks like I need a haircut, but I haven't gotten one yet. Yeah. Can I be honest, though? I sure. never understood the popularity of Cousin Brucey. I think the only reason Brucey is so well known is he's the only surviving person of that group. Yeah, sure. You sure, know? I, I mean, if you think about it, uh, I mean... Uh, if uh, there were a lot of jocks who were a lot better than Cousin Brucey, I'm sure when you uh, listen to WABC, there were guys you liked better yeah, than Cousin sure. Brucey. Yeah. But then, Cousin Brucey was good because he was on at night. You know, you're home from school. It was but, like 7 o'clock. You did, yeah. did your homework, and you can listen to Cousin Brucey. Cousin Brucey. Yeah, but they were, they're were they dead. Yeah. See? They're dead. That's he good. isn't. That's right. You can still do clear cell commercials. Gee, maybe I'll get another job uh, being the, the last <laughs> good, the last good guy. I'm I'm st staying in there till till Gary Stevens goes. There you okay? go. Maybe the last one. <laughs> yeah, but I looked it up. He's still alive. I don't know where, but he's still alive. Oh, you know? But all oh, good guys are old or dead. Poor good guys. <laughs> I'm good though. We're all good guys. Right yeah, now. Yeah. Joni James from the Cap Records. Joni swings sweet. No awkward feeling or soul on this one. WH and 1050, the whitest music you'll ever hear. Yeah. It really sucks. <laughs> like <six times. laughs> I wish you lived in the Bay Area at the time when I was growing up because we'd be able to sit here and, and, and uh, say wonderful things about... Uh, about San Francisco, because what happened was, in San Francisco, we had, as rock stations, we had KEWB, uh -huh. okay? Uh, the original rock station, top 40 station, was called Kobe, K-O-B-Y, uh -huh. but then KEWB came in with this format. They had developed a KFWB in Los Angeles. It was uh -huh. owned by Kroll Collier. And they came in, and we had, like, uh, in the morning was, uh, uh, who, uh, who did we have in the morning? We had... I can't remember who was in the morning. <clears throat> Somebody in the morning. It's quite dead now. But anyway, who, who's the guy that used to do Top 40? Casey Kasem was on that station. Well, you had that troublemaker Tom Donahue out there in San yeah, well, what, what What happened was, there's another station, KYA, and they had nothing, okay? So they decided, what can we do? And in Philadelphia, all these guys had gotten fired for payola. Yeah. But the reason they got fired for payola and the reason they got payola is because they were the best jocks in Philadelphia, yeah. right? Sure. So it was Tom Donahue and uh, uh, who was the other guy? Uh, Bob Mitchell and uh, 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 Peter Tripp, I think was his name. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. they, um, they all hired him and brought him to San Francisco. And wow. that station oh, just exploded uh -huh. because these guys were that good. I mean, I've uh -huh. got to tell you, I heard, um, I heard him. I heard uh, uh, what's his name. Um, I heard uh, uh, Tom Donahue and Bob Mitchell, and I said these guys are the two greatest guys I've ever heard in my life. You know, yeah. and they were. You know, sure. uh, they were just incredible. I'd say they were given a lot more freedom to do what they wanted to do in San Francisco, too, as opposed to Philadelphia. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. You don't have to play Fabian Records here. <laughs> oh. Well, no, I don't think they did that there. I, I think they did whatever they wanted to because they, yeah. were the, they were the biggest jocks in Philadelphia. Sure. So we got all, I called it Radio's Devil's Island. <laughs> you know, all these, all, up, all these guys, have, up the airways. all these guys have been formally, uh, vilified in in philadelphia yeah uh, come here but don't take payola just come here right yeah just come here sure and so then they came and uh i guess 
uh, uh, they were they were huge in San Francisco and white K E W B right off the map. Wow, yeah, you know, uh, good old days. Yeah, so I mean, uh, those were the good old days. I was thinking about the good old days. You know, what are you? You still sequestered there in? Uh, are you? Aren't you in Vegas? Nothing's really. Still in Vegas, staying in, going out occasionally with a mask on, but yeah, uh, nothing opened up really, right? Not yet. No, well, um, I'm, 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 I got a haircut the other day, so I had to wear a mask hey, while I got look it. At me. I, I got a haircut. I look at you. Yep. Who loves you, baby? Stavros, Kraka, get over here. But I love saying how I got the haircut. I went out and I, I found a place where I could buy a pair of clippers because they're very hard to get a hold of. Uh -huh. And they came the other day, and my wife did this. Uh -huh. Wow, well, I was ready. I was, cl I was so close to shaving my head. I oh, was just God, I am just. Well, you've got, you've got kind of a full head of hair. I don't know at your oh, age. Man. A, Jew, a, in the back with a Jew with a full head of hair. I I don't understand yeah. it. Are you sure you're Jewish? Hey, I, I might be Italian thrown in here. I might have the Al Pacino gene. Yeah. Eighty years old and a mop on my head. Go figure. Ooh, ah. Well, my business manager, uh, who was oh, Gary. The Gary, hey, yeah. uh, was just absolutely uh, it has a full head of hair. Just a full head of hair. Never. Mick Jagger, you know, look at this. Some yeah, people. full head of hair. That's because he never and I'm, sure going, I'm going, you know, you're a 90, uh, 82 year old or something Jew. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you still got all that hair. How do you I, do well, it? It's, it? It evens out with me because I got the shittiest beard in the world. I got like nine hairs on my face. And, yeah. uh, Keep the hair, you know. No, uh, the no re the, the reason I do this is because I can't get anything. I can get stuff to grow here, uh, but I can't get stuff to grow. Uh, that's well I got here. one sideburn. I can go through life with like Elvis. And yeah, 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 yeah. Elvis had boom. Elvis but, had but, but I was worried about her cutting my hair, and because mine doesn't take much to do, you just go uh, yum, 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 and you're done. That's it. You're done. Yeah. And she did a beautiful job of it. I mean, this thing just cut my hair, and I'm going. Why do I pay a barber to do this? From here exactly. on in, I'll yeah. have her Same. do it. And I can do it like every two weeks so my hair is always looking okay. There you because go. Because when yeah. it grows out, it gets, it gets, I can't even do anything. We get that wild Jewish streak in it. It gets crazy. Well, I get pimples on my head when I sweat. So, you know, if I shave my you head. You get pimples on your off. head when you yeah. sweat? Uh, you connect these, it's a well profile of James Knox Polk, you know. So, uh, yeah. Come on, even covered. So, so, you really, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I am. I'm just as God made me, sir. Uh, you're just as God made you? How did God make you? 10, 10, 50. Right now, we're going to be hearing the Cap Records album, Frank Fontaine, I'm Not Always a Fucked Up Mentally Challenged Idiot. <laughs> oh, Apple Blossom Time, WH and 1050, Lake Success. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, did Frank? Oh yeah, Frank Fontaine sang as well, didn't he? Oh yeah. I, oh, Frank yeah. Fontaine. People don't even know who. I'm sure even <laughs> if if we've got older people listening to us right now, they don't remember Frank Fontaine. He was a comedian, right? On the Jackie Gleason Variety Show. And he season. used to have a f weird accent. How was that? Was he like, it like this? Like he was a, you know, mentally challenged or spastic or something. And then the, 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 hey, sing us a song. Okay, I'll sing you. I'll be there in Apple Blossom Time. Oh, I've got 49 kids. Kill me. Oh, so, boy. Yeah, it was like it was like Gomer Pyle when he sang. It was, Did you ever find Do you ever find out what happened to Frank Fontaine? I mean, yeah, only, only he, you would bring up Frank Fontaine. I think in the night. <laughs> Fucked up at the film war with Frank Fontaine next week on WHN. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, let's drop this ass and go cocker and see who's more fucked up. Uh, all right, yeah, all right. Uh, Frank Fontaine was on stage in the 90s somewhere and accepted an award, and then he dropped dead on stage. Oh, so really? Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, as far as I know. Yeah. He joined the people who dropped dead on stage, like British comedian Tommy Cooper and Tiny Tim and Joey Ross and the. And of course, Big Sean and all the other guys from the Dead On Stage Club. So, so do you that. want to die on stage? Uh, I want to go in my sleep. I want to have a dream. I want to have like the best dream in the world. And as soon as it climaxes, I'm either in heaven or dead. You know, one or the other. I yeah, don't know yeah, yeah, yeah. Or attacked by land dolphins. That would be fun. So, what? Yeah. What land? I don't know what that meant. I don't. What did you the say? Uh, somehow I can't follow you at times. You I know? can't either. I can't either. Don't worry. No, I don't. I, uh, I would like to have a Bing Crosby death, which means you're dead before you hit the ground. You know, he played golf. Oh, boom, 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 boom. It was a great game. I think I'll beat on the bats with a baseball, but yeah, and, and then, then he goes. Yeah, yeah. Or 
Bob Hope was, hey, you know how it is playing golf? You shoot a hole, you drag Bing, you shoot a hole, you drag Bing. I think it was uh, Fred Allen died uh, on on Madison Avenue, right? Dropped he was right, block, dead, yeah. right dead in the street. Yeah. Yeah, he just, he's just on what's my line well, like it. Now that we've talked about everybody, nobody remembers. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Which is what I like about talking to you. I mean, all my fans can't feel anything from their eyebrows down if they're alive. So. Yeah. So anyway, but anyway, we, hey, listen, uh, we're uh, we're kind of running out of time here. Oh my God, we never. Is, out of is there any place you're playing? <laughs> yeah, my living room, and then I'm playing with myself in the bathroom. Then I'm yeah. gonna make some yeah. coffee in the kitchen, and then, and, then uh, the cats said, are gonna uh, the, the cats are gonna do their paws like this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a Pat Carter girl. We heard that. Ladies and gentlemen, That's he's mad. He's crazy. He's Stephen Pearl. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Maurice Wiggs. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. There we go. Our big opening. Uh, the dreaded uh, COVID-19 opening for our program. How about that? You enjoy that? I love that. I love that. Anyway, a few screw-ups tonight. A few screw-ups earlier today. I did the show, right? Now, I don't have large breasts. I have breasts, but I don't have large breasts. But what I did was I turned off the lights. Wait a minute. I'll show you. And when I did the uh, the uh, the thing with uh, with uh, um, um, Stephen Pearl, right? And then it kind of looks. See how how the light without the lights it shows up. I guess I so anyway. I I didn't do that. You'll see that again like that next week too. Then when I started the program. I started it with my my dreaded uh, COVID nineteen thing, and uh, I just I got it all wrong. What can I say? I had it all planned out. It was going to be beautiful, and we're just going to go to Stephen. By the way, we're doing Stephen Pearl now using Zoom because that's easy for him to use. He, the, you know, Skype is a little more complicated for people. And I wish we could do the show with, uh, with Zoom, but we can't because of the nature of the program, the way in which it's done, and it's much more difficult to do it uh, uh, that way. Okay. Um, but, uh, and so I paid for Zoom today. I decided to do that because I was finding that people were having, he was having a hard time getting hold of me without typing in the password. Where when you have this, um, this paid thing, people don't have to use a password to get into Zoom. So and if I'm going to use it for the general public, you know, yeah, that'd be, and, and people make it easy for people. They just got to be able to click on that and do it. So and they can click on the uh, address I give out. So uh, that's uh, my new, new my new thing now. I'm paying $14.99 a month to Zoom for the time being. I don't know if I'm going to use it forever. Well, let's, uh, let's do what we always do at this time of night. Let's go over to the map. That's the world map, ladies and gentlemen. And it's the dreaded world map because it's the map that shows us what's happening around the world. What, what, what did I do? I push, I push the wrong button? Oh, boy. Everything's going wrong tonight. I leaned over and I pushed a button on this other machine and it started the, the, the promo going. 4,345,646 people, ladies and gentlemen, had gotten the COVID vi virus. Now, that is, that is confirmed. That is not the bar mitzvah. 
I know that is. Conf- I'm going to use that joke till it doesn't get a laugh anymore. It probably hasn't gotten a laugh at all anyway, because I can't hear whether you're laughing or not. Anyway, uh, uh, those are totally confirmed. Now, uh, uh, there may be more people than that. Okay, countries are not uh, saying how many. Like they think China is underestimating. And Russia may be underestimating, but look where they are now. They're in the number two spot. We'll get to that in a second. Total global deaths. We're approaching 300,000, 297,108. 297,108. And uh, that is not, uh, that is not, uh, that is not good. What's well, not good, let's look at the United States, okay? Um, we have... Uh, 1,390,000, 1 million rather, 390,406 cases, confirmed cases, uh, for a total of 84,119 deaths. Now, let's for a moment put that number in perspective. Far and away, both numbers are the largest numbers of any country in the world. Now, you could say the United States is one hell of a big country, but uh, number two is Russia, and they certainly have much as many people in Russia, I think, as we have here, all right? Russia now is in second place, by the way, as you can see here. They're in second place, um, and and that's amazing because they were way down here somewhere. And they have just kept cropping up and creeping up and creeping up, and now they're up there. And Russia is now a total of 242,271 totally confirmed cases for only 2,212 deaths. Now, again, that's a disputed number because we don't trust the Russians, and they stole our election, and we don't know what to believe when they say it. But that's their that's their current number, and uh, I guess we're going to stick with it. But let's look at these numbers. For instance, in the United States, we've had 84,119 deaths. Let's round it off to 84,000 so we can, for the sake of argument. Russia only has 2,012 deaths. They're in second place. The UK, which had the third largest amount of cases, 33,264 Hardly the 84,000 that we are up to, all right? Spain, they have 27,104. I mean, look at all these countries. Italy, which we said was having a horrible problem, at 31,106 deaths. And yet, compared to the United States, they would have a long way to go to get to our number. Now, granted, we have more people in this country than they have in, in Italy, but... If you start going on a uh, per 100,000 people or whatever, we're in the worst shape of any country in the world. There is nobody worse. I mean, maybe we could find some country that has three people in it and one of them got COVID and we could say, well, a third of their population, blah, 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 blah. But no, we are doing terribly. We We are in the midst of this pandemic It has grabbed us by the throat, and what are we doing? We're allowing it to just strangle us by going back to work, by going opening up places, and so on. Like, for instance, in Georgia, where they opened up everything, the amount of people who are dying and have gotten COVID has exponentially zoomed upward. I wish I had a map like this for the United States. I'm going to see if I can find one because, boy, oh, boy, I would love to see what those numbers are. Um, The rest of the country is going up. New York has come down, uh, uh, and we're happy about that. It's come down appreciably. Uh, And I think today we said we have 162 deaths yesterday, okay, and we're hoping that it's going to be less tomorrow. I won't be happy till I see it go under 100. Then maybe I'll go get my blood test, I'll go get my CT scan and so on. But uh, it's, it's terrible what's happening out there. And it is as a result of a president who has bungled this whole thing. You know, all he can think about is let's get this country opened again. Well, you can open it again, 
But if people are wheezing and coughing and dying, it's not going to be long before you're going to have to close it again. And if you don't close it, you're going to see deaths on a, you know, on a, on a, 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 a level that has heretofore not been seen anywhere in history, okay? So we've got to do something about that. Anyway, let's get rid of the map, okay? Well, we love that map. It's, uh, it's, our, it's our nightly map of seeing what's going on in the world. And uh, we're, uh, we'll, we'll look at it every night until we no longer have to look at it. Okay, let me open up the uh, Skype lines here. I, um, as you know, we use Skype. We don't use uh, Zoom, which is now the popular form of doing groups. But it's, it's for groups of people who really have no sense of how the Internet works or whatever. And if they just click a link, it allows them to go to the meeting. And I would love to do this show that way. But unfortunately, I can't control it like I can control Skype, okay? And I am, in fact, doing a program here, and uh, I have to, uh, I have to uh, uh, live with it, okay? So anyway, let's see who's going to be the first person to call in tonight. Uh, will, it, no, it act, oh, well, it was going to be, oh, here, wait a minute, we're having troubles? What, come on, somebody else, give it a try. Give it a try. Let me see what happens. Are we, are we are we having problems here? Um, okay, okay. There's Charlie Wallace. Okay, Charlie, you're there. Okay. Uh, let me see ah. here. Yep. What, turn on your turn on your camera, Charlie. Uh, oh, this is on. Oh, there you go. There you go. Okay, there we got Charlie Wallace. Okay. Uh, and now we'll wait to see if somebody else calls here. Uh, I can't believe uh, I beat Brian. You beat Brian. Uh, Brian, you're a little fat, slow on the go tonight, but um, you're here anyway. So there he is. He's going on up there. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's a California sunset. That's wonderful. Oh, I'm envious of that. I wish I were there. I want I think to, Charlie. I, I, Charlie blocked me. I want to go. I want to go to I there. I, I called yeah. in. It was ringing and ringing. And I had to hang up and recall. Yeah, and there's a, there's oh. Jeff Zeller. You know that all you three people were the first three to call last night because you just popped right up in your place from last yeah. night. Yeah. So that was pretty good. Okay. Anyway, uh, but um, so uh, I did. By the way, I did that interview with uh, Stephen Pearl using Zoom. Uh, because I can do one person with Zoom and it works out okay, you know. And especially if it's somebody like him who doesn't know how to. If I had to teach him how to use Skype, I mean, we talk about Jeff having problems, but I got to tell you, Jeff's learned how to use Skype, and that makes him a a, a, a techie, a genius, a genius. <laughs> Pearl looks really good. What? Stephen Pearl, Pearl looks really good. He does, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah very good. I can't believe he's as old as he says. Exactly. Well, he looks about like I remember he looked when I left San Francisco. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yeah, and I can't say that for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know. I, I was so happy to find you, Alex. I, you know, from back from Live 105 days, then I think I heard you on Sirius a couple times, some mm -hmm. weird hours, like really early in the morning, I think. Mm -hmm. And, but really, really strong politics side. So I didn't listen that much. And then somehow I caught you on here, like five, almost four, four and a half years ago, when you're still doing the Friday night only video. Yeah. Well, yeah. we started out by doing the video on Friday nights. Uh, and it was, if you think about it, it was pretty unsophisticated compared to what we're doing now. I mean, it didn't look as good as this looked, and we didn't have the ability to place people where we want to place them and so on. People will just call, and basically what we were showing you was the uh, live stream stream that we were getting, you know. Excuse me, i got to take a... Uh, let me take Tums. I've been having indigestion lately, and it might be in combination with some medication I'm taking, but let me take one of these. Uh, the acid. Anyway, so um, yeah, we started. That's the way we started. Yeah, I occasionally I go back and I look at those shows and I go, oh man, this is like the Stone Age. You know, 
But it worked. But then Skype changed their whole way of doing things. And I was very reluctant to use it. And um, I, uh, I then kind of learned how to use this thing called NDI, which allows me to take the pictures out of Skype and place them in my picture where I want to place them. And uh, once I learned how to do that, I went, well, this is a lot better, you know. So up until then, whenever I was doing the show, even when I was, went to five nights a week, four nights a week with doing the video, I used, uh, I just basically took the Skype picture and put it on the air, which I could do at that time, but you couldn't do it with the new Skype. So, But here we go. It looks, looks great, you know. I'm not complaining about this. But anyway... So yeah. We, have, we have some good news. We shipped uh, 2 million cartridges now for detection. Oh. We just passed that yesterday. Mm -hmm. We got 2 million. <clears throat> now they started blasting uh, Abbott now because Abbott's showing like a New York University study. They showed like 40% uh, false negatives. So they Ooh. take the test with their stuff and they say, oh, you're fine. And they send them off or they go into another area for regular flu um, I, I heard uh, it was 50% false positives, but I imagine if you have 50% false negatives, you would have 50% false positives, right? No, it's 40, right, but it's 40%, 40%. 40%. Yeah, false not negative. So, so they, they, they put them into an area that is not COVID, it's regular flu, and they find out that they have flu and they're spreading it. So they sort of, Abbott says, well, we're looking into it now. Uh, they, yeah, so our stuff is about 98%. <laughs> correct right now yeah but could it be that the reason why we're seeing problems like this is we've rushed into this thing so fast to try and come up with solutions that we bypass a lot of the uh, uh, yeah. protocols we would use going into something like this yeah they said it takes us usually uh, 18 months just for FDA regulatory to go through yeah. and we took six weeks with them yeah. so yeah they rushed a lot of stuff Mm -hmm. But yeah, but it was basically the test they were rushing. They weren't ru well. They did rush uh, uh, Rezetivir or whatever that drug is. Uh, uh, Remdesivir. Yeah. What's it called? Uh, Remdesivir. 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 Uh, they they kind of rushed that, and they rushed uh, one other thing. What was it that they okayed? Oh, the blood plasma. Well, that thing isn't doesn't have to be okayed. The blood plasma thing. The uh, right. Um. But there was one other thing they were allowing to go through pretty fast. And, you know, I'm in this kind of situation, you, this, we can't l l have lag time. You right. know, we want. And, and for, yeah, for companies like us where we have a good relationship with the FDA because of our tests, you know, this is our like 18th or 19th test that we've gone through FDA. So. You know, they're, they're, they know what we do. When we first started, mm -hmm. it was disruptive technology, you know. So they were, we took a long time for our first assays to go through because they didn't really understand the technology. But now we have a good relationship. And, you know, with the tests that we give them already, they're really happy. Is so, there a problem with the, can I say this? Because I'm old and I can ask this kind of question without e seeming ages. Is, is part of the problem with the FDA that a bunch of old guys and that they don't look, they aren't forward thinking, they just want to cross the T's and dot the I's? I don't think so. I, I don't know. I, one of my friends is in regulatory, and I know they have so much paperwork and stuff. I mean, they're talking stacks of stuff to go through yeah. for testing results and stuff. Jeff was in this business as well. Yeah, I would say that, that their strategy is, is risk rather than success. Okay, they're very concerned about failing or getting bad data or bad information or hurting somebody rather than 99% uh, of the people could, it'll work great. Okay, but a guy's on a ventilator in a hospital. His chances are 20% he's going to survive once he goes on that ventilator. It, can't you d try something, you know, besides what you're already doing? You know this guy hasn't got a good shot at making it, so know. you know uh, you, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, it, 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 I hate to say it because it sounds a lot like it when Trump said, uh, "Well, what have you got to lose?" But it is a kind of "what have you got to lose" situation. You know, get out the Clorox bleach. Let's see if it yeah. works. You know. Yeah. 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 You know. I mean, I I'm not suggesting that, by the way, in case. You're just, <laughs> 
you just tuned in and said Alex just said bl Clorox bleach would be okay to use. Uh, I think it'd be okay to use if Trump got uh, COVID, but I think that uh, because he says it might work, so we should let him have his ability at letting it to have a chance at working. Hold on a second, I got Vernon Nunn in here. Uh, hello, Vernon. There you are. Hi, Vernon. Hi. So anyway, you know, I I just today was just kind of going through thinking that, man, this just made me kind of sick that uh, that that you know this president has just so bungled this that when I look at the amount of people who are dead, I'm going that didn't need to be, you know. Right. If, if he were on top of this thing from the beginning and said, oh, this looks like a dangerous thing, we better do something about this, rather than just, oh, let's close down the travel from China, because he hates China. That's the only reason yeah. he did it. But he didn't think about yeah. stopping all travel from Europe, where this thing was starting to rage. Yeah. You know, and also, it, the, the, all the stuff on the East Coast came from Europe. It didn't come from China. Right. But he bungled that one completely. You know, I mean, I think from here on in, we will know when a pandemic happens to lock all the borders and not let people in or out, you know. But if we had done that, we probably would have had less deaths in the, by, I would say, by tens of thousands. Okay. And Bright speaking tomorrow, right? Bright speaking tomorrow. Who's speaking? To the Senate. Bright? Oh, that's the guy who uh, got fired. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so he's a, he's in the Senate tomorrow. I see. Okay, let me see. Yeah, here. so that should be. They've already said some of the stuff he's going to talk about, mm -hmm. and yeah, he really puts down that you know this can be very dark days for us because we should have been attacking this earlier. Oh, you know, yeah. we shouldn't be easing off in certain areas right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, like Fauci said. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me see here. Let me double click on this. By the way, somebody. Oh, I, you were getting a little audio slapback, I think, from Phil, believe it or not. Really? Anyway, yeah, yeah, but there's yeah. there's Phil, folks. Uh, hi, Phil. Hey. How you doing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, you know, it it's um, it's really kind of, uh, um, you know, I think it's, it's been a bungled situation all the way around. And uh, it's, 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 it's caused so many deaths. And when you look at the whole world... We, by far, are ahead in reported uh, usage, you know, reported uh, uh, cases, although we are doing a lot of testing, which that would bring the, that number up. Uh, and uh, the deaths, though, are what are, and, and Trump is now saying they're under, they're uh, overreported. Overreported, and, yeah. and everybody, including Fauci, says they think it's underreported because we're not reporting yeah. all those people who died at home of it. You know, yeah. so uh, to deny what the, 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 the magnitude of this pandemic. <laughs> Sponsors. <Nice. laughs> Love it, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, <laughs> okay. Very good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That one else see the, see the oh, yeah. screen? Yeah, they can see. They can see it. They can yeah, see what Kevin's see done. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. looking at, uh, yeah, you can. I mean, it, it isn't that great because he it, he's so, he's you're under lit, so it's kind of not as profound as it would be. But there mm -hmm. it is, ladies and gentlemen. Jewel Lysol. Lysol. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll tell come you, on, it's, Phil, it's smile, uh, smile about that one, Phil. Uh, come on, uh, yeah, come on, Phil. I, I was thinking, where can I buy it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think that we're 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 we we're, we're, we're. It's amazing how bad off we are. I mean, I suddenly looked at these numbers and realized how bad off we are. And yes, we're a big country with a large population, but so's China, so's Russia, so so's so's England and places like that, India. For instance, I don't think oh, yeah. I haven't even looked at India. Uh, I mean, um, we got Iran before them. Where, where, how's India doing in all of this? They're I like about five. No, they're six, not. No, no, list. they're not even. I not. I'm down to about a whole bunch of here, here, here. India, 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 India. Where is it? I don't see it. Bangladesh. 
uh, has uh, 269 reported deaths. Uh, Poland, uh, 816. I mean, come on. Israel, uh, 264. Okay. Uh, uh, so you can go on and on about this, and it's really, it's pretty... Uh, uh, is there a statistic on how many people died in, in uh, assisted living facilities as a comparison to other people that have had the... Uh, uh, I looked at that today for New York, okay? Mm -hmm. I looked at that today for New York. Uh, and uh, uh, what came up was, uh, because when Cuomo does his thing... They put up how many people died yesterday and how many of those were in uh, nursing. Uh, nursing facilities. And I think it was out of 164 deaths or something that we had yesterday, something like 30 of them or something was in New York. I don't have the exact figure, but they give them around every day. Around those numbers. Huh? Yeah. yeah, I saw around those numbers too, like the last couple of days. Yeah. Uh, and so they report. I saw a report that forty percent of the U.S. deaths were from nursing homes. I don't think it's that high, but you might be right. I mean, it's certainly pork plants well, have it's something to do with forty percent of the deaths. Right, came from that. I, I, that's a reasonable thing, I think, today. Well, I mean, let's face it; uh, these uh, these uh, nursing homes become slaughterhouses for people. Yeah. Do do other countries have the assisted living oh, facilities yeah. like we do? Of course. Because I think in other countries, they families take care of uh, exactly. uh, people. Well, they don't that... exactly send them off to the old folks' home. Okay, they, they, a lot of the tradition in a lot of uh, countries is that you take care of your elders. Really? You know? Right. Uh, so is that may be one reason why uh, we have such a high well, rate? Well, in this of country, it's happening. a major business. <clears throat> and yeah. it's also a badly maintained business. Mm -hmm. You know, as many rules and regulations as we put into it. It's still a very badly uh, handled uh, 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 segment of our business population, you know. Uh, but I didn't realize it was that high of all the deaths were in uh, in nursing homes. But if it is, it's a cr it's criminal. I thought it was higher, uh, uh, you know. Yeah. No, I don't think it's. Uh, I all I know is that here in New York, whenever I've seen that number, <clears throat> it's always been about maybe a tenth. Maybe tops twenty percent of the total number, okay. Um, but uh, I mean, we're down to one hundred and sixty-four deaths in New York in New York State. That's not bad, you know. That's really from where we were, which was over a thousand a day. Uh, that's a great uh, uh, jump down or jump or leap down. Um, but I think you pointed it out once, Alex, is that that little graph in the the far uh, the bottom right hand corner, you know, where it shows the mm -hmm. the line, the yellow line. Yeah. I think that's the really important part of that is I think you showed Italy was starting to crest a little bit. But, you know, they keep saying flattening the curve, but flattening the curve is still having that steady yeah. rate of deaths. Yeah. Right. Oh, well, wait a minute. Let so me let me bring many of those are actually coming down. Well, let me see here. The uh, the, um, the map. Uh, we go back to the U.S., uh, Places and, like New Zealand and South Korea, they're actually coming down. Well, Spain, Spain is, uh, well, let's go to Italy. Let's go to Italy as an example. Uh, they're still, believe it or not, uh, hold on a second, let me get this on the screen here so that we can show it to people. Uh, they're going, still going up a little bit, but they seem to be kind of leveling off. Uh, Spain... Uh, is uh, is kind of went down a little bit, and then it's now back up again, but it's almost about where it was before it went down and then came back up. United Kingdom, there's there's the you know the, it's straight up, it's still going up. All right. I remember remember yeah. Trump said the United Kingdom was okay to come here. Yeah, yeah. For about a week. Yeah, for about a week, for about right. a week until people really. Here's the U.S. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Look, boom. See, that's the whole U.S. If I were to show you New York, there's a downtrend. Okay? So, uh, I don't know if you can see those and, things. And then also remember, that's within shelter. That's what? That's within shelter in place, right? Oh, uh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. So, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting. What is what is now? What is happening with Sweden that didn't shelter in place? What is their statistic? Has anybody seen their that? statistic? Uh, their statistic yeah. is let's see here. Sweden it's is very high. It's like a twelve or thirteen percent death rate from people who get the infection. Um, yeah, check. Check like Norway, their neighbors, right? You'll see that. Well, yep. Norway, Norway's had uh, how many deaths? Two, two hundred twenty-nine deaths. Like two hundred. Two hundred twenty-nine deaths. And yep. uh, let me see here, but I'm looking to see. Oh, so here's, here's, here's Sweden, three thousand four hundred and sixty deaths. Yeah. So you so see, we're, we're, and if you want to think about Norway, for instance, which we just showed. Uh, was it Norway we just showed a while back here? Norway was what, 200? Yeah, yeah 200. Yeah, 200. These are countries of approximately the same size and the same population. And same. Look, at the, yep. look at the difference in the, in the deaths. Yeah. yeah. You know, so you know, I, well, you know why all of those people died in Sweden? Why? They're lost in the IKEA store. And it, it, could be. Be. it could be. It could be. It could be. Yeah, go to an IKEA store? Uh, no, I've never been in an Ikea store in my life. Really? It takes longer to find your way out of there than it does to find to, to shop, right? Yeah. 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 But then Even it takes the you shortcuts. longer than either of those things to try and put that stupid shit together. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ikea, Ikea, Ikea. Yeah. Oh, really? I stuff. Yeah, well, I, I suppose if I had an Ikea store nearby, I might buy some of it just... Well, no, I couldn't buy it. Marjorie would not let me. <laughs> she would not let me. So uh, I, I take that back. Uh, but, but I would do it if I had an apartment, okay? You know, I mean, for bookcases and things like that. Yeah. You know. uh, and, uh, here comes Patrick Blazik. Let me see here. Uh, he would go in the number seven spot. Uh, let me see here. He would be Darth Pat. Uh, wait, 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 I have to look again. Cancel. Start again. Darth Pat. Okay, where's Darth Pat? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I'm having a problem finding him. Uh, maybe I'm blind the, as a bat yep. here or something. Let me once again double click here. See, it isn't until somebody completely signs in that I can do it. Um, Alex, what? Patrick's the one in the wheelchair. If you can't, I, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Why isn't he coming up? This is ridiculous. Oh, there he is. Oh, wait a minute, Darth Pat. There we go. I should have my glasses on. Is what I should do. I see him. Yeah, I know, but I didn't have my glasses mm -hmm. on, so, you know, I'm an idiot. Yeah, you got to have a master's degree in engineering to put some of those IKEA things together. I have to have a master's degree to find my glasses. What? Yeah. Um, yeah, no. I'm I, curious. I've never been there. No, i got to yeah. go yeah. see one. How you feeling there, Patrick? Are you guys uh, hunkering, still hunkering down? Yeah, no, we finally got the nanny state to fuck out. And the state Supreme Court declared that the governor's bullshit was oh. unconstitutional, and now we can open well, everything up. So. Really? Wisconsin, hey, right? You're How? free to die. Prepare to die. You're all free <laughs> to die. What do you mean, well, so what? Uh, what do you mean, I, so what? And, and as a Christian, mm -hmm. my idea was to go be with Jesus anyway, so <laughs> what I fear death. <laughs> you see, if you get, see, if you get there, it doesn't exist. You're see, here's the thing. Back. Here's the thing, Patrick. It's old farts like me that are going to die if I were living in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because you open up that state like you say they're opening it up, and it's going to be it's going to be a bloodbath. I'm telling you right There's now. There's lots of meat packers up there. Here's the thing. Good good again. And straight people as well. <laughs> not everybody is going to open up and not everybody is going to go out there are people that are going to make decisions on their own I mean this fear that as soon as that ruling came down that everybody was going to throw their doors open and go out on the street like a Super Bowl celebration is bullshit it didn't happen and Restaurants well, are going to be very judicious how they open. I mean, there's enough shit that's happened here mm -hmm. that... 
what's the what's what, what's the weather like where you are right now? Uh, it's about today. It was about fifty. Yeah, wait till it gets to be sixty or seventy. No, uh, and, 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 and you're going to see people out there hugging and kissing each other and blowing right. blowing air in their mouths. Alex, here's the thing. That would be happening even with the stay-in-place order mm -hmm. because, in, especially in this state and states where it's bullshit throughout the winter, as soon as we were going to hit night weather, it wouldn't matter if the fucking uh, yeah. National Guard was okay. out there. My question is this. My question is this, Patrick. Nanny state... Laws are bullshit, all of that. Are you going out? Yeah. Okay, well, it's nice knowing you. <laughs> hey, Alex. It was. Because you do have some compromising situations. No, well, nothing, nothing other than the physical aspect of being paralyzed. There's nothing wrong with Isn't my... there something with, like, the, the uh, well, having to use a catheter and things like that that compromises your immune system? Remember, Alex, I've gone over this with you guys on the show. These hands mm. touch everything. Yep. So it doesn't matter. I mean, I catheterized before this pandemic in the men's room after wheeling in. And yes, I do have a hand wipe, but, you know, you might miss the spot. Do you, do you you ever, can I ask you a question? You're in your wheelchair, right? And you go into yeah. a bathroom. And now the floor in the bathroom is sopping wet. Exactly. I mean, exactly. are you? Do you still wheel in there? I, I'll you if if. Oh, the, he walks. If the, <laughs> he walks. <laughs> it brings yeah. it back. Yeah, it's a miracle. <laughs> Turns if, on the jetpacks and hovers. <laughs> the stall is wet. I'll get you the urinal then, because the urinal usually have less wet okay. than. But can you because get? That, can you that's get? Why, Alex, I'm not as fearful of this as others might be because I've gone through so much bullshit just in general with these hands wheeling through anything that I don't think the COVID sitting on the floor in the bathroom has a chance against whatever the hell else is laying on the floor in the bathroom. You Probably got that third uh, uh, immunity. <laughs> I immunity. mean, I. Okay, let me ask that. you a question. You said use the urinal. Uh, how do you do that? Do you, can you, is it low enough? Uh, no, I, I've got, I use extended catheters. So instead of the 14, <laughs> uh, it's now 28 inches. So you, oh, so you, yeah, you got to use a catheter. So yep. you stab, grab and stab. Yep. Okay, and then, you, everybody and then you've got the extension cord, so to speak. And now, how, well, how do other people in the bathroom react to this whole thing? They shouldn't be looking at my dick anyway. <laughs> yeah, but, you're, but your dick is like five feet away from the urinal. No, uh, I'm right up to it. Oh, I uh, see. Okay. Okay. But yeah, you yeah. still, you have to... Uh, just just ask them if they want a drink. <laughs> <laughs> now, one, of, one of my best friends... One of my best friends is a roller in, in a wheelchair. A roller? And roller, what do we call it? So, like, like all, like, the South Bay, those those comedy shows, and we go to the Giants games, so we always stuff beers in the bag behind his chair. And so whenever security would go and they want to check in that, mm. we always tell them, dude, you don't want to go in there. That's his piss bag. And the guy says, <laughs> oh, okay. I'll back off. He lets us in there. We go in there. We got all our beers, and we're ready to start drinking. Wow. And I think even think of that Frost Amphitheater one, went the one that was at Stanford. We roll up there about five minutes before they opened the gate. And at Stanford, the line went hella long. We yeah. parked in a handicap and we rolled right up to the front of the line with him. And like four or five of us went right in. <laughs> Can I say something? My friend. Hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, t Tony wants to on say Wisconsin. one thing. Go ahead, Tony. This is what scares me mm -hmm. on Wisconsin. And this is, you know, I understand Patrick's observation with it, but what does it really say, though, that they're trying to go... They're making this too political now. I mean, people's lives are at stake. Yeah. And they're overthrowing the, the governor's... No, the, the governor was allowed by law, by state constitution, he can put in a... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, an, uh, a state of 
for 60 days. After 60 days, he can no longer, without the legislature, extend any sort of medical emergency, anything like that. But he has a 60-day window for, let's say we had an earthquake in this state, which tip, I wouldn't imagine would happen, but, and there needed to be something done right now. The governor could take care of it immediately, but it's only good for 60 days. And the reason... The, the, the issue was the uh, Health and Human Services mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. individual, she extended beyond the 60 days, and she's not allowed to by the Constitution. Mm -hmm. But here's the question I would ask everybody there, though, in your state. Did they meet CDC regulations to check all seven boxes? I mean, they're going against... The, the, the science and the doctors. It's almost like they're just throwing shit to the wind now. But like know, nobody I'm, wants to follow what the doctors are saying. That, it's that, almost that, like, Alex, you're going for cancer, and you're going to tell the guy at Sloan how to do his job? Well, you're not You're not willing to, you know, to go along with the science is what the problem is. There are two things. You're not willing to yep. go along with the science. And secondly, you're not doing this for yourself. You're doing this for other people. You know, you're staying indoors because you want to protect other people. Now, and I do it partially because I want to protect myself because there are people out there who don't want to protect me. You know, like I'm walking down the street the other day, and there's a guy with a mask, but it's down here, right? It isn't on his face, and he, he coughs. Well, you know, come on, at least put your hand over your face, you know? You know, it's hard to breathe in those masks. and You know, I understand some people might take them off, Especially if they had other people. Well, he had around. to take it off to smoke. Oh. oh. Hey, did it snow? Uh, <laughs> where they got detectable snow in Manhattan? Yeah, we did. The other day. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah. We had a, yeah, we had a Connecticut. Yeah, May. You know. You yeah. Well, this, this is where we've got some weird weather, and you know, uh, I think the weather is saying, well, we don't want it to get warm because uh, we don't want uh, Trump to be right. You know, so. <laughs> I don't know. It's just it's just scary that I think Trump started this whole thing to revolt with these states. Well, the revolt thing is something else altogether. That is not a legitimate revolt. It is people with a political agenda who are going there. I mean, when you show up to protest stay at home orders carrying uh Literally, AR-15s, AR what else? Insanity, I saw one yeah. thing that was so huge that it, it was like a, a flamethrower. I don't know. And you go <laughs> you go to the state offices protesting with that. Why? What does it have to do with a stay-at-home order? You know, it's almost like get you yourself a little shoot, sign yeah. that says, I want to be able to go out and then go protest. But no, they're showing up and they're yelling in people's faces and they've got their guns and they've got their Confederate flags and they've got their Nazi flags and there were a couple of guys in Ku Klux Klan outfits. And it has nothing to do with the stay-at-home order. They you got know. more time to burn the flag. What it was. Did you read you the know, Forbes you know, article I sent you, Alex? Uh, what? Did you read the Forbes article I sent you which about one, all that? Which one was that? Uh, I, the day before yesterday, uh, I, where, where all that, all that's coming from these groups back in the woods. Well, it's also coming from Alex Jones, isn't it? Yeah, well, that that too. But you know, these these groups have been uh, forming back in the woods, and they're and they're all starting to come out. And I and mean, it, you know, you know, it, I understand if you want to if you want to protest, okay. Uh, right. I understand if you're sick of being stuck indoors, if, if yeah. you can't have the, your small little brain can't wrap around uh, the fact that staying indoors may save your life and the lives of others. Forget about that. I, I recognize your, your desire to get outdoors. I, I see that. I'm going stir crazy myself. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the protests that are being held have little to do with that situation it's more a political thing first patrick had his hand up and then vernon has his hand up yes patrick well the, the protest in wisconsin was against what what had happened with the extension of the state it wasn't for the 60 day stay it was the extension and nobody here really had an issue with 60 days it was the overreach that wasn't the governor overreaching it was 
uh, one of his cabinet people, and that's where the issue came in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if they had gone through the normal channels with the legislature, they even said um, about 30 days ago when it was uh, look extended another 30 days that they were willing to work with the governor to extend and to do, um, you know, uh, sequential opening in various areas, but because of what happened, they they took it to the Supreme Court. Yeah. So, L.A. extended their uh, stay at home until August. Another who, three who, months. L.A. Late July, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to find a, 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 a something cases in the U.S. United States coronavirus. I, I would like to find a decent map where I can I can find out for you how things are going in various states, but uh, I don't know how it's going in Wisconsin. Do you know? Patrick? I was just looking at the data for Wisconsin, and it all shows that their their projections are to are going down. Mm. Oh, okay. If you look at COVID nineteen data, their projections. Uh, what's the name of the site here? But that's just projections. That's not necessary. Yeah, COVID. Well, it shows past and projections. It's COVID nineteen healthdata dot org. That's yeah. the same one that they all use. Yeah. Uh, and it, it shows the past, and then it shows the the projections from today on, mm. and it shows the testing. It shows the confirmed infections and estimated infections and they're all going down for Wisconsin that they, they uh you can pick the state and go into that what what is the site again covid19.healthdata.org oh okay uh yes uh, Vernon Nunn. uh i just had a little comment uh, first of all an update on Kentucky we're still we're still about uh, a third of the deaths of uh, neighboring Indiana, and I live in Louisville, which is just right across the river from Indiana. They've got uh, over 1,600 deaths, whereas Kentucky is at 334. Mm -hmm. And we had the protest at Frankfurt also when our governor would give his little speech in the afternoon. You'd hear all the shouting outside the place where he was doing the the uh, uh, announcement where he was give it, giving people data. That's all he was doing was giving people data. And I have a question for Patrick. If the governor had approached the Republican-controlled legislature about extending that, and you tell me that they would have gone along with him, I cry bullshit. This was all political. Okay, cry bullshit. You don't live here, and you haven't heard— Well, they're the doing the same thing in Michigan. They're doing the same thing in Michigan because there's a Democratic governor in Michigan, and Republicans control the House— and or the the legislature in Michigan, and they're doing the same thing that Wisconsin did, and their their Supreme Court is controlled by conservatives as well, just like they he's are in Wisconsin. So it's Michigan. all political. It has nothing to do. With, this is the law, and that's why we're protesting. It has nothing to do with the law. It has to do with conservative versus liberal. Period. And he wants to win those states, so he's making sure that he strikes up unrest there. Mich Michigan overreached. They wouldn't even let you buy seeds for your garden. You know, I mean, uh, it was uh, Patrick had his hand yeah, up before. Patrick. Oh. Yes. Um, Vernon's comment just reminds me of when um, we were going through the uh, Scott Walker years with the recall and all of that stuff, and other people from other states were making assumptions on what was going on within my state or other states. You don't hear me make comments on other state policy because I don't live there. I don't know enough to make the assumption of anything. I can all I'm gonna tell you is living here, knowing what we, what had been said and what's been discussed, that the Republicans would have worked with the governor because they wanted to do it legally. He overreached, so that's what you get. Mm -hmm. And there's no exceptions. Well they they sued and actually, the lawsuit was in two parts. It was to rescind what was done, and then the Republicans asked for a six-day stay where it would have still continued the order so that then they could negotiate with the governor and the state Supreme Court threw that second aspect out and declared the entire thing unconstitutional and that all businesses could open up immediately. So that wasn't even what the Republicans were asking for. 
they were asking for a six day window after it would be stayed so that they could negotiate. So uh, the state Supreme Court, they said, nope, all, all unconstitutional, done. Everybody open up. Hmm. Okay. How many people do you think are actually going to open up, though? I, if, if, you, if I had to hazard a gap, I'd probably say 60 to 70 percent. Okay. Get I ready for a spike. Get ready for a spike in Wisconsin. Um, the places that are going to open are not going to be in the Milwaukee area or in the high, the big city area. It's going to be more in the rural area where they haven't really seen anything. So, um, I, I don't know. I, I mean, if there's a spike, then you, you will deal with that. But, you know, you got to you got to chance stuff at times. And hmm. I, I think it's uh, open up is, is warranted. So. Yes, it's uh, interesting. Oh, well, well, Kevin, then Phil. OK, hmm. Kevin. Well, I was just saying uh, I saw something on Florida, too, and how we thought Florida was such a mess down there and the beaches were all, you know, they were pissing on each other and all that stuff <laughs> down there. And I saw today that the the Floridians actually had self quarantined themselves before everything all oh, hell broke loose down there and they mm -hmm. actually didn't have it as bad as they did because the people were actually kind of smart and locked themselves away and it, all we saw was a lot of the nutcases out on the beach and you know the media was kind of overdoing it doing it that way and they didn't have it as bad as they thought they did um, and you know looking back, uh, 20, you know, uh, uh, with 2020 hindsight, they're saying that, you know, they, they actually did pretty good because a lot of the people, probably older people, just locked themselves up and hung out and were watching New York saying, oh, shit, well, you're, you know, you're, you're, the door. You're probably right about that in that uh, Florida has an older population. Right, and they are most at uh, at risk in this whole thing, and they so probably they didn't, said, they didn't yeah. hang outside and yeah. watch all this crap going yeah. on. They you know waited for all them people to get scooped off the beach and go home. Yeah, and uh, so you know people aren't stupid, and in in Wisconsin's case, I'm sure there's not a lot of stupid people there, and they'll probably just you know some of them will just. Stay, stay I like the way Pat, the look That's Patrick. That's going to happen in a lot of places I, that open up. I like the look Patrick just gave you because he indicated what I was about to say. There are stupid people everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Know. I mean, I think if you're not going to go out, you're not going to go out. I mean, they're going to try and open up here, and I'm, I'm going to let them all. I'm going to watch it from here. Phil, <laughs> Phil, you had your hand up. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I thought the idea behind the shelter in place was to flatten the curve and they wanted to flatten the curve so that they didn't overwhelm the health care exactly. system. Mm -hmm. That's and, right. But they keep moving the goalpost, you know, uh, pretty soon. Now it's like, well, uh, when, when there's no more deaths and the things go down for the, uh, three weeks and then it's going to be, well, when we get a vaccine and then it's going to be when Brian comes up with a test that works in one minute. And, right, Phil. You know, but uh, it's because even... I, I think it's because you have that fear of what went on in Wuhan. You know, the big three, two, one on the building, everybody cuts loose. Let's get outside and everybody opens the door and we rush out there and everybody goes to the bars and everybody's partying. I think that's what they were afraid of. And if we do it that way, sure and shit, we're going to overwhelm the hospitals again, I'm sure. Do you, so they don't want to do it that way. I think, think, our, that I think that's the way it's going to get done. After well, all I think our I think our governor here has the best idea, and that is that you think of it as a valve, okay, and you open it up a little bit, and you see. Right. Then you look at the science, and you see what the metrics are, and if uh, suddenly there is a bigger rush at the hospitals, you turn it down. And that's what like I a, think you he, mean by moving the goalposts all the time. That's what they are. They are moving the goalposts, but. They're doing it, you know, they're opening cautiously. <clears throat> yeah, and, 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 and I love living in a state, I feel safer living in a state where I have a governor who is uh, playing it safe. 
you know. And we have the most debt too, and you, I mean, yeah, we yeah. have the most like fear. Well, to begin with, in we the reality, have, we have the, that's we, your freedom. You we, can go yeah. if you want. You don't have to. We have the most deaths here, not because we our governor did anything wrong, not because we did anything wrong. Although he will tell you that he felt he did a lot wrong, uh, but because we have two of the biggest airports in the United States. More traffic flows through JFK than any other airport in the United States. And it all comes from Europe, where all these countries were having those problems. And they came to New York City, and maybe they didn't stay here. Maybe they went to Milwaukee. Uh, maybe they went to California. But they would certainly, a lot of them stayed here, and that's why we got the brunt of it. That's why we were the canary in the, in the coal mine. Um, now, because we took aggressive action, and because I've stayed in here for f two months, I haven't left the apartment f except on a couple of brief occasions, uh, we've managed to stem that, that mountain and bring it down the other side so that we're now level with where we were about two months ago. And, and I think that that's a hell of an accomplishment and should say to the rest of the country, that's what you do. You pay attention to the data. You pay attention to the science, and you listen to the scientists. Because, yeah, I don't, yes, uh, oh, yeah, I, I don't, yes, Brian. And to Phil, I don't think that they're moving the goalposts. It's like if you have a carpet business and you're losing money and that curve is going down and you want that curve to flatten, right? You want to stop losing all that money, but then sure enough, you want that curve to continue to go up so you start profiting, right? So I think they're just saying, well, flattening the curve was isn't really the goal. We need to bring this down to you know down to zero, basically. But well, it was it was the goal, and uh, and the reason that they did no. the shelter in place no. was flattening the curve was not the goal, Phil. It was no, the man, not. Let me goal. finish. Oh. Let me finish. The flattening the curve was not the goal because the 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 curve once it gets to the top can flatten, but it can flatten at a high point. You wanted it to come back down so that it didn't overwhelm the system. If it just flattened out and became a mesa, then you've got a lot of trouble. Well, they it either was going to become a mesa or it was going to go down, but they didn't want it to continue to go up to the point where it was uncontrolled and they would overwhelm the healthcare system. So That's what the happened system is not overwhelmed. And it, it, the deaths and cases are going down, so it's it's time to open up the economy. Well, it isn't time to open up the economy uh, everywhere, really. everywhere. Okay, and not not, everywhere. and certainly not the way that tr Donald Trump is encouraging yeah. it. And what he's doing is he's asking for a major disaster. Yes, uh, Vernon. The cases are going down in New York, Bill, but they're not going down in the rest of the country if you subtract New York. If you subtract yeah, New up. York, they're going and up. That's the problem. First of all, I want to apologize to Patrick because he relayed some information I was not aware of, and I, I made an assumption that I was wrong about. Which was was what? About the legislature not wanting to work with the governor. Oh, okay. All right. Don't no. worry about it, Vernon. We're all here <laughs> just discussing stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew what the information was. Right. Uh, and you know, yeah, okay. Tony, Tony go you ahead. know what I was going to say too? Like when I was listening to Trump today, this is what scares me with him. I was listening to part of his interview. It's almost like he's trying to make all these false prophets. First, he backtracked. He he went against Fauci today saying, oh, he's trying to play both sides. He's he's lying. Like he's trying to discredit this guy. How can anybody even sanely vote for him by doing this? Well, Fauci is being a scientist. And okay. He's being honest. Well, he's he's giving his best assessment because his reputation as a, as a scientist and as a uh, uh, as someone who deal, deals in vi uh, uh, virality or whatever they call it epidemiology um, epidemiology uh, is at stake here in a way if he doesn't just tell you what he thinks and knows. And, and, and Donald Trump much. says, well, I disagree with him. Well, yeah. I'm sorry, Donald, but I don't consider you an authority on the subject. You're an authority on opening up a casino and touching women's pussies. Okay? Exactly. I mean, Alex, here's a question I don't like about, this is what's alarming me about Trump, is that 
And even after that, then he's trying to say, oh, well, next year the economy is going to shoot off like a rocket. And it, he's just lying. on based Well, on it's, going, it's going to because he isn't going to be president. But that's yeah, another that's, story we, altogether. We got a 20 percent unemployment. Even Phil, Phil, you think people are going to call you up for carpet anytime soon? And spend thousands of dollars when well people are they don't want you in the house thinking you might have the COVID. You know what? Come on. I am busier now than oh, I've been. Oh no way. My are you serious? Seven percent year to date, and I am I am so busy. I'm oh, working Saturdays now, where I usually take Saturdays off, and uh, I I'm booked back to back. Uh, and really? I mean, they want you. I'm not making fun of your business. I'm talking about. I wouldn't feel safe, Alex, having anybody in the house right now. Well, yeah. a lot of people do. Did you hear what Russia Limbaugh? You hear what Limbaugh said today about Fauci? No. The president. Said? No. <clears throat> yeah, he said, if I was Fauci, if I was the president, I would just praise Fauci left and right. Say he's the best thing. He's the best doctor. But then behind the scenes, I'd be doing everything against him. And the caller said, well, isn't that what he's doing now? That's and what he's said, doing. Yes, that's yeah. probably what he's doing now. Well, Raising I'm, him left and right and then in his face. You know, uh, it, 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 what oh, happens yeah. here is that we, it, we have a, a, a president, we have an administration that wants to listen to the answers they want to hear rather than to listen to the advice of people who are learned. Uh, and that includes uh, 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 even Scarfy. Uh, yeah, but uh, she looks at the death chart. Yeah, no, but, but, but these are people. These are people who are scientists who you rely on to give you the, their best opinion. But you don't then say, "Well, I disagree with him." Well, what 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 credentials do you have to disagree with him? Exactly. Are you he a scientist? Do you know about this science? I mean, I don't even think Trump has really read up on this science. I mean, you want to talk about somebody who read up on the science when you listen to Cuomo? You know he's. He's literally reading statistics every minute and is able to talk with certain ability about this subject. And he says, even he says, you know, I leave it up to the scientists because there's only so much I know. And yet Trump goes, I disagree with Fauci. Well, I'm using what as your metric? It is gut. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's got, using the unemployment yeah. line and the jobs, and that he his only thing he can. All run on he is the knows, economy. all he knows, is he wants everybody getting back to work, so the economy he hopes will jump up, yeah. so he can then get reelected. That's the only thing exactly. that's on his mind, not about, the fact that there are eighty four thousand right. dead human beings in the United States on his watch. That's sad. I mean, how can you? They're on that's the sad. voter roll. Hmm. Uh, 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 what Trump wants is not to uh, put us in a depression and not to kill the world's economy. There, You've got to balance those things. You get a check uh, whether you work or not, Alex. Phil, uh, Phil, 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 he could have avoided this whole thing. He could have minimized the amount of, of damage that was done to this country if he had taken the reins of this government Early I mean, on to protect us against this. Virus. On January twenty first, Fauci said there's no problem. I with don't the, care what the, Fauci no, said at that time. That is a lie. Uh, but oh, wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Like wait a minute, Charlie. It's yeah. a lie. Tell us. Fauci never said there's no problem with with COVID. He never said those words. He said that Chinese were were being transparent and uh, that it, it and that uh, you just check. What Fauci said on January twenty first. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, yes, um, um, Patrick. Even Phil, even if he did say that, he had the right to change based on information, just like the rest of the medical community. You know, if 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 things are different, even in an operating room in the middle of a surgery, and a doctor sees something, he has to adjust accordingly so i mean even if fauci did say that and i seem to remember reading something like what you said but whether or not he said it he has a right to adjust his opinion and tr and, else. and trump doesn't so but so fauci yeah. said something and there were 87,000 deaths or cases whatever you said alex about uh, 87 now trump made a decision 
and now you're you're gaslighting him and saying that you know his decision was no good and his decision is responsible for all those deaths. I'm not gaslighting him. Do you know what gaslighting is? Do you even know what gaslighting is? You're you're singling him out. No. That's not gaslighting at all. It was, it was taken from a movie called Gaslight, in which a husband tries to convince his wife that she's going crazy. Yeah. Well, uh, well it has nothing to do with gaslighting, Phil. It, 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 this is the situation. Uh, you're blaming Trump. Uh, I don't know. Thing that early on. The, okay. The okay. Information, the Hold information. on a second. I've got it here, Phil. Oh, yeah. Pull it a fact. Uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci told us there's nothing to worry about. That's his quote, there's nothing to worry about. The truth is, um, uh, Steve Bannon has been defending President Donald Trump against criticism that he was slow. Bannon lauded Trump. Fauci told us there was nothing to worry about. That's his quote, Bannon said during an April interview. We fact-checked Bannon's claim in Richmond, Virginia, native... Each time, however, Fauci added that the situation could change. Mm. Well, no. I mean, nothing stays the same. Nothing to worry about. No, no. he appeared on the conservative first. Newsmax TV and said, bottom line, we don't have anything to worry about this one, right? Asked Greg Kelly, the host. Fauci answered, obviously, you need to take it seriously and do the kinds of things... Uh, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and Department of Homeland Security is doing, but this is not a major threat to the people of the United States, and this is not something the citizens of the United States right now should be worried about. Right yes, so we're, the same Vernon, information and, that Trump had, but you're crucifying Trump and you're lauding Trump uh, had out. different information in February. You're talking January. Yeah, by yeah, February, yeah. By then, by then, right Fauci right? was singing a different tune. Quickly, Vernon. How many times did Fauci say it was a hoax, Bill? Uh, yeah. Probably yeah. time he talked to you. you know, no, right? give us an answer. Never. Give him an answer, Phil. Yeah. How many times did Fauci call it a hoax? Uh, he never called it, he never called it a hoax brought about by the Democrats. Uh, and and how, long, how many times, Vernon, did Trump say that? Dozens. All right. So I'm glad. Yeah, yeah. No, you know when Trump was running for president, also Phil, according to Trump, by the third year we should be at six percent GDP growth. We never got to even four percent. Yeah, well, you know the Democrats shut down the economy. (laughs) Oh yeah, it's the Democrats' fault. Well, they brought the virus well, over. Really, the Democrats didn't oh. get in power until 2019. <laughs> hey, right. Phil, Phil, nobody virus. brought the virus here more than he Donald Trump did if he had carried it in the valise. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> you look at and shoot. Some of that dirty money he was well, Listen, Phil, Phil, Trump bottom line Trump. is he's the president of the United States. He's responsible for protecting us, and he has not done his job. Okay. He doesn't even care about that. Don't don't care. Forget that. about it. He hasn't he done care. his job. You know? That's his job. One is to protect the American public, and, and I don't think anybody will argue with me on that. I think he has, and he's not only protecting. The really? American people. Then tell that to eighty-four thousand families. Okay. Yeah, that, that, tell that to eighty-four. Think of that number, Phil. That's eighty-four thousand people are dead on his watch. And those are eighty-four thousand people that didn't social distance, that didn't wear masks. Oh, didn't they didn't. They didn't know about this because they weren't uh, told about it until they you finally were? came down I with it. Watching Fox News. Hey, I could have gotten it just as easily as anybody. I was going to movies yeah. and doing things like that. I just didn't get it. I was lucky. Uh, you're probably asymptomatic and spreading it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Listen, right. I haven't been out of the house tomorrow. in two months. I can't well, be asymptomatic anymore. Find out if that's true, Phil. Anyway, that, right. that's it. Right. For, that's that's it for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, you know, uh, and uh, it's a bit, germs. It's been another good one. Good one. Good one. Good one. Okay. And we add, I'll end with a high number of people watching, too. Anyway, listen, i got to go. Uh, thank you to Phil. Thank you to uh, Brian. Thank you to Jeff. Thank you to Charlie. Thank you to Vernon. Thank you to Kevin. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you very much. And, of course, uh, 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 Tony. Thank you. Uh, give yourself a, a big wave of goodbye to everybody, and I will give you a big wave of goodbye back. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the citizen panel. 
Uh, and uh, that was fun. Okay. All right. That was fun. Uh, listen, I'm going to turn off the Skype line now. And I'm going to make way for our dear friend, um, uh, uh, Jack Bishop, who's going to host the intersection next over the most of the same gab net. We'll be back here again tomorrow night. 1030 Eastern Daylight Time. Same time. Same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, you know what to do. Tell her I love her. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice night and stay safe. <laughs>